I just wanted to put a little disclaimer here. Um, for most people, this will be an excruciatingly boring vlog. It's all about building a little tiny synth from scratch using components like transistors, potentiometers, capacitors, and there'll be a lot about wires. And here's where I keep assorted lengths of wire. Whoa. So if that's not for you, I would say just skip the vlog because you will be bored. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> here's the vlog. I think we have a package. And it's raining again. I think these are the components here. Hold on one second. These are the components to the synth. Or, well, you know, just like a really basic os single oscillator synth. Let's check them out. They did such a great job of wrapping these things. I have to give a shout. Jameco in Belmont, California. Good job at packaging. Breadboard. This is what we're gonna make the oscillator out of. These are little, little chips. Whole bunch of potentiometers. Audio connector or potentiometer. Battery connector. Some transistors. Caps. Resistors. More caps. The reducers. So what you do is you hook this up to a nine volt battery, out comes five volts. Rectifiers. Yeah, so let's uh, start figuring this thing out. Two more things that we need. Well. Three. This is an eighth inch audio jack. Cables. Speaker I've had since eighth grade. Okay, so after reviewing the footage that I took on Friday, I realized that a lot of it was definitely not clear. Since I'm just a learning electronic stuff myself, I don't feel that I was able to explain it that well. So we're here on Tuesday, and I'm going to kind of guide you through, and I think it should be a little bit better, at least than last Friday. You're not even going to see that. Don't worry about it. I, well, actually, some of the stuff you saw before this, everything from here on out. What we need to start with is a breadboard. And a breadboard is weird. All right, so let me explain it. Okay. So a breadboard board works like this. Typically, you have your positive and your negative here. The current on the plus side and the negative side both go straight down. Each one is connected to each other. These are called buses. Middle, every line on the left and the right are connected to each other, like this. So over here you're gonna connect two of these buses together, you would use a wire and connect them as such. Now the top line and the third line are connected. None of the other lines are connected with each other. Does that make sense? I just... Basically you have, you know, each, each one of these lines on either side, you know, you got one and two. Each, each line here basically is its own circuit. It's it's like a wire that you would attach something to. So you have your uh, wire there, and then you have something connected there, something connected there, something connected there. 
that's just like this right here but none of these are actually connected so you so if you wanted to connect say this one and this one you plug a wire in here and you plug a wire in here or anywhere on this line or anywhere on this line you can plug it in here or here or here or here and you just run the wire down now this line and this line are connected and with your buses all the lines in the plus are connected so that if you need you need electricity you connect a wire here and connect a wire here this line now has power and if you wanted to make this a negative connect a line here connect a line here this now positive this negative does that make any any sense i i i hope so i i hope that works so i showed you the components on friday i made a few alterations to it but for the most part, yeah, it's all the same components. We're gonna, what we're gonna start off with is power. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get rid of some of this stuff around here and we're gonna, and we're just gonna start with power, all right? So let me just go ahead and zoom this in. To start, we need a, we need actual power coming from a battery. So we're gonna plug that over here. Now this is what they call a reducer the way this works basically the way a reducer works is it's similar to a resistor in that it reduces the voltage there's no, no tolerance on there when you're working with like digital components like this which is a which is our oscillator this is what's going to make our noise you need to have a constant value so this reducer will reduce nine volts they have your battery here you plug your negative into the middle plug your positive over here and out comes five volts that makes sense right after that what we're going to do is we're going to connect the five volts to our bus and go down the side i'm going to put a wire at the bottom send it to the other side so both buses will have five volts on them so the way this works is that the input, the positive, is going into this reducer here, and the output is gonna go out on the opposite side. We're gonna connect this side to our positive, and the middle volt, which is always negative, to our negative. So now, there's power running all the way down. I'm gonna bring the power here, and then the power, and then bring the negative here. So now, we have power from here going all the way back up to here. You, you don't have to al always do that. I'm just doing that to make it a little bit easier so that we can use shorter wires to reach the components. The next thing we're gonna add on is a capacitor. A capacitor, I find it a little hard to explain, but essentially what we're using it for is to drain off a certain frequency into the negative ground. In other words, if you're familiar with music, think of it as a notch filter. What we're doing here, and I'm not sure what the frequency is, so let's say this is all at the same volume. When we plug, when we plug the capacitor in, we're gonna drop 700 hertz all the way down. Just pretend that line isn't there. It's just, it's just cutting out. The next step is adding our oscillator. Now this is a digital component that produces a square wave. Sine wave is rounded like that. I'm sure you've seen that on an oscilloscope. A square wave is either, is either off or on. In the music world, sine wave sounds like this. And a square wave would sound like this. So you hear the difference between them, like there's a square wave's kind of buzzy. This produces that buzzy, buzzy sound. If you notice on pretty much any chip that you see, focus, there's a little notch in the top. Let me show, let me show you with this. So basically this is the way our oscillator or any, really any chip work. You have your, your chip, that's a good rectangle, right? There's a little notch at the top that indicates that it's, that's the top, which then means 
on the left side, this is number one, two, three, four. Now then it goes around like this, five, six, seven, eight. So these are the number pins, so when you look up the chip, they'll say, okay, pin number one is power. Now, in our case, this, it's a 14 pin chip, but right up here, this is our power up here, and this is our negative down here. Not always the case. Sometimes power is here, or here, or here, or here. So we're first gonna add in the, the oscillator. We know that this right here, this pin, this is our power pin, and this is our negative pin here. So let's hook up some power. The chip now has power. Well, actually not not quite yet. So at this point, the chip now has power. Power plugged in over here, and we have the negative. Okay, so on our chip, we have outputs and inputs. Now, our first input is here. So we're gonna send stuff in this way, and then the next one down is our output, and we're gonna send stuff out that way. We're gonna throw an input on there. And we're gonna connect the line that has the cap on it. And connect that right to the first pin on the chip. Since this is an oscillator, what that means is it's essentially pulsing the sound. That's kind of the way it works in music. With this, it's pulsing voltage and whatnot. I, I don't know, it, something to like, like that. So, when you have your square wave, so if you have your square wave here, this would be a zero, this would be a one, and it would be going really fast without the actual potentiometer. If you put the potentiometer on it, these get further apart, therefore it gets slower sounding. So with a lower resistance, we're gonna have like, the waveform is gonna look like this. So that's with say 10K resistance. With 1 million K, <clears throat> which means that the, the, that the frequency is gonna be traveling, it's gonna be traveling faster, which means the pitch is gonna go higher. So with these wide ones, we're getting a lower pitch. With these fast ones, we get a higher pitch. So that's why you add a variable potentiometer in there so that you can kind of go between the two and kind of make a sound or something. So let's, let's see what happens. Okay, so we're gonna plug the positive end of the potentiometer. We're using a uh, one million, okay? We're gonna plug that top pin. Then we're gonna plug the negative side right into the next pin. Now what we need to do is we need to hook up a jack so that we can hear what all this sounds like. So I'm going to plug the negative side into our negative bu bus, positive side into our output. I'm going to hook up a battery. So now we're going to plug in our speaker. So we'll, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn it on. Let's see if anything comes out. Okay. So we have sound. Now there's so much more that you can do with this. For brevity's sake, I'm gonna stop there. You can, you kind of get the point. Actually, before I stop, let me hook up a transistor. What a transistor does, like I said, I am not an expert by any means. What I understand is that the transistor will fill up with power and then release. In a sense, it's kind of a timer, but it's really quick. Let me explain how I'm gonna hook this up. What I'm gonna do is over here, we're gonna hook to the output of oscillator one. We're gonna hook this pin into the input of oscillator two. And then we're gonna hook up another potentiometer, I think, either a 50K or a 10K. Yes, let's see how that how that works. I'm gonna link in the description some more information on transistors and just a really cool YouTube channel called Make. And they explain how transistors, resistors, diodes, all those things work. And it's really cool. I'm gonna link them in the description below. So check them out. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this transistor in and hook it up and see what comes out of here. I'm unplugging the speaker. I'm gonna plug in the transistor. We're gonna connect the output of the chip to the input on the transistor, the output of the transistor onto the 
input of the chip. And there's one small thing that we need to make sure we do. We need to filter out some bad tones. So we need to ground with a transistor. We're gonna ground the input on pin three. So we have pin three here. I'm gonna plug it in right there and we'll ground it out. I'm gonna move the speaker wire down to the output on pin four right there. So then I'm gonna take the potentiometer. This is a 50K potentiometer. I don't know if you can see that. And I'm gonna connect that from the, from the very last pin on the transistor all the way to the output or pin four on the chip. So let's plug this in and see what sounds we get. Let's hope it's a little bit more interesting than that first sound that we were getting. So far that's kind of interesting. Now let's mess with the second <clears throat> knob that we installed. So anyway, on that note, I'll let you get going. What we came up here with was super simple. Hopefully it was informative. I don't know. Building this thing kind of was definitely informative to me. Someone that has really never done any sort of um, electronics like this. I'm hoping that I explained it in a decent enough way that it kind of got through this little lens here but <clears throat> you know I mean what we what we made you know wasn't amazing but it made noise and coming from this battery it's pretty cool so anyway have a great night and I'll talk to you later <laughs>